London, early 21st century. 12-year-old Quinn Abercrombie arrives at his mother's workplace, where she works on the subway construction, to inform her that his scholarship application has been rejected. Now the woman has to figure out where to find the funds. At that moment, one of the workers informs them that one of the tunnelers has stumbled upon a cave. Quinn heads to the scene, and while the workers try to investigate the issue, he ventures into the newly discovered passage. He explores the new space when flames suddenly erupt at his feet, illuminating the terrifying visage of a creature that spits at him, hitting his eyes. Quinn scrambles out of the shaft and tries to warn his mother of the danger, but she drags him to the exit to wash his eyes when flames erupt behind them. His mother pulls him into the elevator cage and presses the ascent button. As the cage climbs upward, a dragon bursts from the flames, crushing the woman as it emerges. But Quinn survives. Soon, the flying fire-breathing creatures take control of the world. It turns out that dragons existed in reality, and they wiped out the dinosaurs before going into hibernation. Humanity tries to fight them, but their population only grows. In 2010, humanity resorts to using nuclear weapons, but it only hastens the dreadful end. By 2020, Earth lies in ruins, and the few remaining survivors live in a medieval-like existence, devoid of the comforts of civilization. A grown-up Quinn is now the leader of a small group of survivors in England. They take refuge in a small castle in Northumberland, trying to avoid direct confrontation with the dragons. However, the dragons constantly attack, and the human population dwindles. One day, Quinn's assistant reports that one of their group members, Eddie and his children, intend to go in search of a harvest. Quinn tries to persuade the recklessness of the plan, emphasizing that it's not the right time as the dragons are active and the harvest isn't fully ripe, which means there won't be seeds for the next planting. But Eddie is aggressive and refuses to accept that others are living under similar conditions. Quinn stops him, taking away the keys to the vehicle. In the evening, Quinn and his friend Creedy put on a performance for the children based on old English legends, and then they all pray. The children repeat the words containing instructions for actions in case of dragon sightings. Everyone settles down for the night, unaware that Eddie has indeed embarked on his expedition. He gathers four adult children and goes to the vegetable plantations. People rush for fresh produce, while an alarm is raised at the fortress. Dragons are spotted on the horizon. People evacuate the children into secure basements when one of the women reports Eddie and his children missing, just as they come under attack by the dragons. One of the sons instantly perishes, and Eddie gathers the remaining survivors, unable to escape from the engulfed area by fire, waiting passively for their demise. However, Quinn and his people come to their rescue, having reached them in a fire truck and managing to repel the dragon with water. The monster incinerates the front vehicle while the others try to retreat. Still, Quinn's vehicle's engine fails. Creedy pushes his friend's car with his own, and they escape as the dragon devours the bodies of the deceased. A day later, the radio operator intercepts conversations of unknown individuals. Quinn calls for a general assembly, as these could be marauders, no better than dragon attacks. Everyone capable of bearing arms heads out to confront the potential threat. Soon, several vehicles bearing U.S. Army insignias approach the Citadel gates. A man steps out and demands to see the leader. Quinn goes to meet him. The newcomer introduces himself as Van Zan and requests shelter for his group for one day. He is a pilot who managed to restore his helicopter and flew here to fight the dragons. Quinn is skeptical as he knows how strong and dangerous these creatures are and advises the Americans to leave. However, Van Zan then shows him a dragon tooth personally torn from the mouth of the last one he killed. Recently, he realized that dragons can see in the dark and during the day, but their vision falters in the pre-dusk twilight. His people became the first to successfully kill a dragon and have been doing it repeatedly since. Quinn allows the newcomers to enter their fortress, which doesn't sit well with Creedy. But in the midst of their argument, a real helicopter flies overhead, something they haven't seen in 20 years, which convinces them of Van Zandt's credibility. The girl, pilot Alex, reports that there are no dragons in the vicinity, and they can rest for now. Her companions are archangels, and their lifespan is only 17 seconds after jumping from the helicopter. They fight the enemy using nets, throwing them onto the dragons. Later, Quinn introduces Alex to Jared, the child he found in one of the villages when he was very young. The girl is impressed, as few people care for others nowadays. At that moment, a signal arrives, indicating the approach of a dragon. Van Zandt declares combat readiness. His people take their positions in the vehicles, and Alex takes to the sky in the helicopter. 
but for safety, she requires the readings of beacons that one of the fighters needs to set up. A guy on a motorcycle is dispatched to carry out the order and activates two beacons, while Van Zan instructs the net throwers not to deploy their parachutes until they are sure the creature is on the ground. But then the guy with the beacons perishes, unable to install the last device in time. Quinn sees this and, jumping on a horse, races into the mountains just as the dragon approaches the helicopter very closely. The archangels leap out and rapidly descend to the ground. The dragon chases after them, and the guys release nets, knocking the dragon off course. Nevertheless, one archangel perishes. Meanwhile, Quinn activates the third beacon, and Van Zan asks him to act as bait for the dragon and lure it toward the weapon. Quinn mounts his horse and rides toward the fortress, and just as the beast is about to grab him, Van Zan fires a dragon-killing projectile. The creature falls to the ground. In the evening, the people celebrate this victory. However, the arrival of Van Zan dampens their spirits. He reminds them that it's too early to celebrate, especially considering the loss of his people, who need a proper burial. Later, he tells Quinn that Alex is the keeper of memory, so she remembers the names of all the fallen to honor them properly. He admits that he needs more people, so he hopes to recruit from Quinn's team. Alex explains that their chemist managed to identify the composition of dragonfire, which is identical to napalm, and that all dragons are females that reproduce from a single male, presumably based in London. Killing him would eventually put an end to their population. Quinn believes that a trip to London is unreal because the creatures have excellent memory and can trace where people come from to destroy all remaining survivors. He refuses to risk his people's lives, having seen the very first dragon in the tunnel where his mother died and knowing its power. At that moment, the radio operator reports that Van Zan is not following orders and is currently persuading Quinn's people to join him. The leader rushes to the platform where the American urges the men to take up arms and resist the dragons. Four people volunteer, but Van Zan orders the strongest ones to be forcibly taken. Quinn confronts the American, and a fight ensues, which Alex interrupts. She leaves a bottle of iodine with Quinn and departs with her commander. As Quinn tends to his wound, he sees Jared packing his belongings as he intends to become an archangel. Quinn, who hoped Jared would become the leader of their community, tries to stop the young man, but he still decides to leave. Van Zandt's team sets out for London, while Quinn goes to gather firewood to burn the dragon carcass. Jared joins him, having decided to listen to the man who saved his life after all. During the night, Quinn re-examines the dragon and finds an egg, confirming the truth of Van Zandt's words. At the same time, Van Zandt's group approaches the outskirts of London, where they come under attack by a massive dragon, resulting in the death of nearly the entire military group. Alex calls for Van Zandt, but there is no response. The Citadel's radio operator intercepts these negotiations, while Alex lands and finds her commander, who is in shock over the dragon destroying the entire column in a single strike. Meanwhile, the dragon flies towards the location where Vanzen's group came from and attacks Quinn's fortress. Quinn orders the children to hide in a shelter equipped with a fire suppression system. They manage to evacuate almost everyone when the dragon releases a powerful blast. Creedy manages to close the metal doors behind Quinn, but perishes in the flames. To calm the screaming, frightened children, the leader recalls the words of their constant prayer for salvation from dragons. Later, Quinn hears banging and rushes to the door in the hope that Cruddy survived, but instead he finds Van Zan and Alex, who have returned to the Citadel. Van Zan gathers all the remaining weapons because now Quinn insists on the dragon's destruction. They need to reach London at twilight, so they will use a helicopter for the journey. Van Zandt leaves Jared in charge, and the trio takes off. Upon arrival, the people are horrified by the number of creatures and witness a male dragon devouring its own kind. It appears that they lack food, making the creatures even more dangerous. Quinn suggests approaching the lair through underground tunnels. They head underground, clearing the passages ahead with gunfire. Van Zandt gives Quinn special bolts, equipped with powerful charges capable of killing a dragon. To do this, they need to wait for the moment when the monster breathes fire, as that's when its chest is vulnerable. The problem is that these bolts have a range of only 15 meters, so the one who attempts this task is often killed. The group emerges from the tunnels and engages in a deadly battle with the male dragon. Van Zandt intends to climb a tall chimney and asks Alex to lure the dragon away while Quinn waits for the monster on the ground. The team splits up to execute the plan. However, upon reaching the designated location, Quinn discovers that he has lost the bolts. 
Meanwhile, Van Zandt climbs up the chimney and shouts for Alex. She runs, luring the dragon, and the soldier shoots, but the gunfire doesn't do much damage to the dragon. So, Van Zandt charges at it with an axe and perishes. Alex manages to reach Quinn, who admits he is weaponless, and they take cover in the ruins. They try to evade the dragon, which is hunting them, and make a dash towards the location of the destroyed trucks. Alex spots a bolt under the bottom of one of the vehicles, and while Quinn retrieves it, she distracts the dragon. Quinn loads the crossbow and, emerging from cover, manages to shoot the dragon directly in the mouth. There is an explosion, and the creature perishes. Alex encourages Quinn, saying that Van Zan believed in him. Three months pass. Quinn's group sets up radio towers, re-establishing contact with the outside world when Jared reports that the French have just contacted them and demand the leader. Quinn, smiling, announces that they need him right now. Alex laughs, noting that people have become optimistic again. Well, it's no wonder. They saw the last dragon a couple of months ago, which means the creatures are gradually dying out, and soon, humans will once again become the masters of the world. Filmmakers worldwide compete, trying to come up with some original scenario for the end of humanity. Many reasons have been suggested, from religious apocalypse to nuclear warfare. And here, a fresh idea at that time, the demise of civilization due to a dragon invasion. Coupled with an excellent cast, the movie turned out to be quite solid, although it is almost forgotten today.